This is my brand new 2023 Pelican Per Trader 10E. Now we call it Per Trader because we don't catch any bass up where I am. We're gonna go over really quickly the basics and the modifications I've been doing to it. And we got a few, we're gonna be doing a bunch more, but this is up to this date what I have done. Cause I'd rather be fishing than working on this thing right now. So we're gonna start with the technicalities of the Per Trader. The basics of this thing, it is a 10E, so it's a 10 foot. E meaning electronic. So it's got pre-wired, um, Harnesses going through the boat from the front from the start from the start to the front from the bow to the stern We're gonna get technical about this so later on you can wire in your fish finders your batteries to hide the wires But I haven't got that far. We just got the battery sitting right here Technically you could put it at the front and then the one we could plug it in from the front And then your wiring comes back and then you could hook onto it from there to the trolling motor But we haven't got that far yet now. It is a 10 foot. Obviously. It's a 10 E It is also four foot four foot wide now the best thing about that is it fits right between the wheel walls of your truck. So it's not like if you have, um, let's say a paddle boat, it, you gotta fit it on an angle because it doesn't quite fit in there. So this baby skids right between your wheel walls and it fits great inside the truck. Now one thing as far as loading, super easy to load. I have no problem loading this myself. It weighs about 140 pounds. Now, how I load this, we can show you later, probably not, who cares. I lift it, I, I skid it right up to the box of the truck because the box is right here at the end gate down. So I get in the box, I use my back as hard as I can. I grab it by the two front hooks right here. Then I lift it up and then I set it on the end gate. Then all I do is run to the back. I lift it up and I skid it in. It's super easy. The best thing about this is that you can do it yourself. You don't need a buddy. So a quick note, it has two seats, but I usually have just the one in because the pooch usually stays in this area right here. And I have to tell you right now, this thing is awesome. We've been using it a lot. I freaking love this thing. It's way better than the kayak. You have more room. Oh, and another thing too, it is really stable. I'll show you, see? It's the pontoon style. So yourself, including somebody else, you can easily, easily stand in this thing like it is a little tippy but you're not going to capsize you can stand in it you can cast it's good for fly fishing that's the best thing you can put one foot on here actually i've had two on here it's a little tippy but you can still stand on this thing now we'll start at the bow we'll go over everything i've added and what i do and don't like there's not much i don't like other than the price it's definitely overpriced i'm going to tell you that right now so what it does come with is these two right here I'll give you a different angle here. I got the little ice fishing rod in here with the free fall. Absolutely garbage reel. Don't buy that piece of shit ever. But it comes with the two mounts right here at the front. Now, this is the plug I was talking about. This is the pre-wired harness right here. And it goes all through the boat. And then it comes out doo -doo 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 -doo, right here. So this you could hook right up to your battery or whatever else you want. But currently, I'm just leaving this here right now. And I'm just hooking it up with the, the terminals. And this is cool because these can unscrew, tighten, so it doesn't matter what fitting you have, they both work um, for this style of battery that I got. But we gotta go back to the front because I said we start at the bow. So, first thing, actually this is about the second thing I bought, get a cleat, it is so convenient to go with the anchor because usually you just tie it onto here, I got a snap, then I would wrap it or I tie the line to the depth and it's such a pain in the butt. So all you do is after you throw the anchor in, when it's set at the depth, you just wrap it around the cleat and you're done. That is probably the best thing right here I bought. It saves so much time, love it. Now the anchor I got, I got the biggest one at Canadian Tire because it is so windy in Saskatchewan, you can almost blow away. This is the 20 pound one. There was a 10 and there was a 15 I believe, but we got the big mama jumma because I don't wanna blow away. There's nothing worse than your boat skidding in the water when it's not grabbing. Now, this is the first mount. This beauty right here is the GoPro mount. It's got a pivot right here on a ball swivel and you just tie it to the top. I actually got an extension to sit a little bit higher. This depth or this height is okay, but if you got a partner like your dog, you're just gonna get her two ears in here. And all this is, it pops up and you can turn it. You don't really necessarily need to turn it, but you put it in right here, you snap it in and you push that to take it out. It's okay, it was only like 20 bucks on Amazon. It was a super cheap mount. I actually don't really like it. I'm probably gonna do something different. Another thing you're gonna want is I got, pretty much got all these on Amazon, except these clips. These clips right here, they go on the side. I got these at Canadian Tire. They're about seven bucks for the pair. You definitely want to have an, um, an oar because never rely on a battery. Plus it doesn't have an actual gauge. So I don't trust it. You never know when you're gonna run out depending on the weather, the wind, 
I don't want to be paddling this thing back or, or just going with the wind if you don't have a paddle. But even when it's calm, you have no issue paddling this. But if you got a decent wind, good luck. You're just going to hit the bank and you have to pick it up when the wind dies or when you get another battery charged or you don't want to go that way. That's a good bonus. I like that. Me like that. But I tell you, this thing was definitely overpriced. So we're going to keep going in order. Now, like everybody else, get the EV, EVA foam. It's beautiful. All you're going to have to do is cut it out um, accordingly. It's a little bit of wire, so you got to take a couple inches off. And you have to go around stuff like that if you get it. And it goes right to the back. Because when it's nice out, when it's a nice warm day, you want to be barefoot. It's a little more um, luxurious. We'll put it that way. Now, this is another thing I bought. I love this. I got this mount on Amazon as well. I think it's like 15 bucks. I don't remember what it was. But coincidentally, look at this. Look at this. It just lined up perfect with this. So I like it in the middle, reason being, your buddy's here, if your other buddy's here, Jess can't fish. But it puts the rods right in the center as well, so your extra rod you guys can all have in the center. And then the other rod you can put here, or if you're trolling, not if you're trolling, but the other person's rod you can put there too for extra space. Now this right here, this is the, the Sasky edition. You may call me silly, but I thought of this and I love this. Whole reason I put these little clips in here, and these also are just um, riveted in, comes in a kit and you just drill a hole, pop rivet them in, away you go. So the reason I did this is because when you're driving, I don't like reeling it up all the way because your snap will go into there. Eventually it's gonna wear out the little grommet and it can, it's gonna start tearing your line. So I don't like reeling it up. And yes, you're gonna say, some of the rods come with the hooks down there, some don't. It's like 50-50 with my rods. And if you leave it dangling, it's gonna wrap, it's gonna throw around the reel or the rod when you're driving, it's such a pain in the ass. So this way, what I do, oh, it's. A little screwy there. So I just throw the rod in there and I put the hooks under here, get tension and fly at a whole whopping um, three or four kilometers an hour. I forget, but it's pretty fast. It's not that bad for this unit. Did I mention this thing is slightly overpriced? Now going back, I, we kind of missed this step. If you look, there's little grommet thingies, there's little whole things for your beverages, your tackle, your loose ends, throughout the entire thing. I'll just scan over that so you guys can see that as well. So there's lots of places. You have lots of little copies to put your stuff. And this is little water drains too once it fills up or if, you get, if it's raining or whatever. It's a place for it to drain. Then you have some deeper dishes in here too. So you can put a lot of stuff in there too, like your peanuts. You can put your spits or whatever you want. And it goes right to the end. And there's also handles on each side too. Same thing, it basically mimics the other side. It's got more holes, whatever, grain, drains. Same dish, it's exactly the same. Now, like I said, it comes with two. We only have one in there right now, and you can snap it up. And the, oh yeah, if you guys are not sure, you can move these up and down wherever you want for your convenience and how you are fishing. Moving on to the back. This is the, the stern. Here's what we did here. I went on Amazon, I got some more of these. These are exactly the same as the Scotty ones, except they're like $15 for two, or if you're gonna spend like, or no, it was $30 for two. But if you get the Scotty ones, they're like 30 bucks for one. It's the same thing. People overpay for stupid brand names. And it's the same, same idea. You just pop them in, pop them out, and then you can hook up your rigs. This is ideal for trolling. I love trolling. Even though we haven't done it much with this unit, only like a couple times. Moving on to the other side. We did this too. What I did was I went down to the home hardware store and got some mounts like that. Reason being, the net, when I'm standing, because I'm always fit, I'm captain. The captain sits right here. So when I'm fishing, whenever I catch a fish, I don't want to be putting the net in the center because it takes up too much room, the net, and it might get in everybody's way if you're casting or anything. So I wanted the net right at the back, and depending what side you want it on, you can flip this here or put it on that side. That's a bonus, and then we also got this baby right here too. Same idea, but I'm going to grab one more of these eventually and put it um, probably up here for the front person. I left it, I left it enough room so you can still put one right there. And that side's probably no go because that's the mount that I don't really like. Kind of regret that piece of shit. All right, moving on. This is the brains of the operation. No, not me. It's the battery. We got the battery on Amazon too. It's an 80 amp hour. Uh, what brand it is? It's called Scream Power. I don't know. This 80 amp hour was like uh, it's like 250 bucks. So I took a chance, and so far we've been out quite a bit. I charge it up fully every time, and it hasn't really stalled out. Hasn't given us any problems at all. It does seem to be lasting. But I mean, if any other brands, if you 80 amp hour, it's probably gonna be like 500 bucks. We got one half the price, still it works great. I have had no problems yet. And it also, I'll show you. It has a battery clicker thing right here to turn it on. This is where you charge it. And it's also got, you see that? It's got the USB plugs right there in the side as well. 
and this is the power to turn on and off, and that is the charger. Obviously, you want to stick to lithium because it's super light, and weight does matter in these. Like, the payload, it, it can hold 600 pounds. It's still quite a bit, but if you got an old lead battery, they're like 50 or 60 pounds. So, I don't know. I like lithium. They seem to be good. We also went with the Newport trolling motor. I'll show you. This is the Newport, and I did not want to get a Minn Kota because, well, this is a 55-pound thrust thrusting beast machine right here. I've had no problems with it. Honestly, the reason I bought this is reviews. If anybody wants to shit on anything and they don't like it, they're gonna put it in the review. They'll go out of their way to tell you it is a garbage thing. But the reviews, I don't know, there's like, I don't know how many thousands of reviews and it was still four and a half star. So that's why I went with it. I've had no problems, it's got lots of power. I don't need to spend the extra for a Minn Kota. I think, and it's been, I'll show you here. This is how many boost, boost uh, parameters this thing has. It's got five settings, one, two, three, four, or that's reverse, reverse has three, sorry, that's reverse, and I think it's five up. Yeah, see, five up for the speed. Now, depending on, I guess it does have a gauge, I kinda lied to you guys. Right there, it'll show the battery charge on the top of it. High, low, right there, 55 pound thrust, see? Now, you gotta be careful, figure out your amps for your um, settings. Number one setting is what's usually I bomb around in, I really don't go that fast. I think it's around eight amps. You gotta know your amps to kind of figure it out for your life for your battery, because it's an 80 amp power. So if I'm running around on eight amps, I can get 10 hours out of this battery, ideally in good conditions. But every notch up, basically cut it in half. So if you're in fifth gear, you're gonna be burning, you probably get an hour, or maybe an hour and a half, two hours, I don't know. But you gotta be careful and be very thoughtful about how far you're going out, because you do not wanna get stranded in this thing. Next year, we're gonna get a gas one too. We're gonna get, we're gonna get a Merc. That's one thing we haven't got yet. Looking back, I need to respecify. When I was saying on or off right here, that's not to turn the battery on. That's just to turn on the USB. That was it. That just turns that on, and that just turns that off. So let's not let's not get confused. And this is the look. This is here. You guys, you can check it out. And it needs to focus. This thing on Amazon, I think it was like 280 bucks for an 80 amp hour. That's also why I went for that. I think I told you the price. I don't even remember at this point, but there is the looks of the battery and the terminals. You don't have to worry about soldering new ends because you can put the, the, the both ends on this regardless. I believe this beast right here, uh, it was around 300 bucks too. So, I mean, it was a, probably a couple hundred bucks less than the Minn Kota as well. And I've had no problems with this thing. I mean, I'm not going across the Atlantic. As far as the little lakes and ponds we go to, I don't think you need to spend the extra for this. Currently, it works really damn good. So that's pretty much it for the Pelican Per Trader. And yeah, it's overpriced. It was like 2,000 bucks, I think, Canadian. I don't know what that is in American, probably like 14, 1500. And we could only get this on Amazon, only. I tried so many places, this is the only place, it was Amazon. 